It's Monday. It's October 7th. And the word of the day is vote. Used in a sentence. Vote right now. Mm -hmm. Do it. If you have a mail-in ballot already, stop the podcast right now and vote. And do it correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Used in another sentence. Help other people vote too. But only good people. The good people. Yeah. Used in a third sentence, interfere with Republican nope, nope, voters. You, too far. Too far. I'm <laughs> no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, J.D. Vance fails to human. The taxpayer-funded Oklahoma Bible story somehow manages to get worse. And a family values Republican steals a family because of its <laughs> power. <laughs> <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, it's October. You got any October surprises you want to announce? Uh, World War Three. Oh, did you do that? Was, okay, I was wondering. It's a thing. Uh, guys, Heath is just trying to get me to ruin my family Halloween card, and you just have to wait for it to come in the mail like everyone else, Heath, okay? <laughs> I am very excited about that card. <laughs> All right. In our lead story tonight, we got the first and only vice presidential debate between Tim Walls and J.D. Vance last week. And in terms of having an effect on the election outcome, it was basically a tie. As usual with debates, the polls don't move very much. But in terms of scoring the debate as if it were a debate club competition, the general consensus in the media coverage I saw was that J.D. Vance won in terms of style points as a smooth speaker whereas Tim Walls was a bit stumbly at times. We'll see if Kamala Harris takes over both slots on the ticket. I'm not sure. <laughs> but once Tim Walls got over the initial nerves of being on the national stage for the very first time, he seemed to settle in and do better. Also, Tim Walls was not lying the entire time. So in terms of that, in terms of factual content, it wasn't even close. So I don't know. Maybe we're scoring debates wrong. I, yeah, media? Might, yeah. Maybe. Look, so I missed the debate. Power was out. Hurricane. Great excuse. I, I had all kind of good excuses. And literally every bit of coverage I saw afterwards led with, oh, Walls seemed a bit nervous at first. As though that's the most important takeaway when the other guy just lied constantly the entire fucking time. Yeah. Smoothly. It's yeah. worse now. The yeah. remake of Aladdin where everyone agrees Jafar is way more put together is going to be weird. Yeah. It's going to be a weird <laughs> take. So in terms of positive takeaways from the debate, I will say it was refreshing to see a dynamic of two human beings talking without insane outbursts at every moment. Also known as a debate without Donald Trump on stage. Mm -hmm. Walls and Vance were both generally calm and respectful. The other big positive for me was Tim Walls giving some excellent answers in terms of content. For example, in response to J.D. Vance giving, you know, the typical mealy-mouthed Republican answer about abortion, Tim Walls basically said, yeah, we're not doing bodily autonomy based on geography. That's insane. We're just doing bodily autonomy here. Yeah. No, th this whole leave it to the states argument is impossibly dumb. How many people are really convinced by we don't want to take your rights away. We just want to empower someone else to take your rights away. Right. Also, you guys have spent the last three years knitting tiny lassos for the fetuses that make it off the ramp. So <laughs> you'll excuse me if I don't buy your premise here. <laughs> okay, that's enough positive stuff. Exhausting. We're going to pivot to the stupid stuff because it's way more fun. If you want the serious stuff, check out the debate. And, of course, the stupid part that we're going to talk about came from J.D. Vance exclusively. Huh. I'll start with his remarks about the housing crisis. Vance claimed that the problem is immigration. It is not. It's not. Ask any economist or just, I don't know, think with your face. A house. The housing crisis <laughs> is caused by a lack of affordable housing. Huh. It's pretty simple. But Vance claimed to have a study by the Federal Reserve that backed him up on his claim. He did not. Nope. He was referring to something that's not even a study. It was a speech from an official at the Fed. And there was one sentence in that speech. And you could take it out of context, of course, because it's one sentence. And that sentence said, you know, here's the basic concept of supply and demand. That was the so-called evidence from Vance. And yes, 
demand for housing goes up when you have more people trying to live somewhere. But it doesn't matter where those people were born. Nope. And those people add to the supply also if they become part of the labor force that, I don't know, might build houses or generally just add to the local economy, which in turn makes it more profitable to build housing. That entire Republican talking point is complete nonsense. And also evil. Right. So look, yeah. look, if your solution to not enough houses skips over too few houses and lands on too many people, you're the bad guy. Yeah, sure. Are. Thanos is going to be like, what are you doing, man? You're That's, supposed to be on. random at the very least. <laughs> I'm going to snap some houses into okay. existence. I do love the idea, though, that they think Haitian migrants are like traveling through the jungle and swimming rivers and escaping patrols and eating cats only to outbid us on the cutest little two bedroom in <laughs> New Jersey. Like you gotta... right, yeah. I like the backsplash. Yeah. Relax. No, that's not what's <laughs> happening. And by the way, the key is affordable housing. We have enough buildings to house everyone. People just can't afford it. And that's because of, this is very simple, income inequality. Hmm. So quick little econ lesson. There's a thing called the, this is a nerd thing. It's called the Gini coefficient. It's an index from zero to one of income inequality. Or 0.999 repeating, if you will. The, those are yep. equal. So Same zero thing. is perfect equality <laughs> and one is perfect inequality with like one person having all the income. So higher is less equality in terms of the Gini coefficient. That number peaked in the US in 2018, thanks to Donald Trump's tax cuts for the rich of 2017, obviously. And the number actually decreased in 2022, year over year, under Biden for the first time since 2007. So in terms of the housing crisis, pretty simple. Housing is more affordable for more people when the Gini coefficient is lower. When it goes down by 1%, we usually see a decrease in housing prices of about 1.3%. So there, solved it. Spend tax money helping the lower and middle class and they can buy more housing and buy more other stuff. It's called demand side economics or, um, Economics. It's yeah, economics. Right. Yeah. Honestly. I love that when you suggest doing this kind of thing, the, the rich act like we're the Joker throwing money from a blimp. But they seem to understand the concept of stimulus when they're, say, bailing out the banks or bailing mm -hmm. out the airlines. You know, yeah, it's right. weird. Also, the, the Joker should throw money from a blimp at this point. That would be good, too. <laughs> Better than PPP loans. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> Next up, we have the question for J.D. Vance about health care. The moderators mentioned that Donald Trump, you know, he's clearly got the concept of a plan. He said that. And they were wondering what that concept is. And the answer from Vance actually tried to defend that very sad lie from Donald Trump, who didn't do any homework. Vance basically argued that technically everything starts as a concept of a plan <laughs> because you, you have to think <laughs> about not, concepts yeah. to make plans, obviously. And he explained that Trump didn't give all the details of his plan because you can't cover a 900 page document on a debate stage. And I actually got really mad at this moment because that did not lead to the very obvious follow up. Nobody asked, oh, OK, do you have a like a, a draft of a 900 page document about health care? Oh, no, no, you don't at all. Zero points. You get zero points right now. Well, so I, I think the 900 page document that he's referring to is the Affordable Care Act. Right. And And now. I demand, because he said that, a long-form video of Donald Trump going over that document. Right? You didn't have time at the debate. Well, now you've got all the time in the fucking world. Make that motherfucker read 900 pages of legislation and then tell us what his thoughts are as he goes. <laughs> okay, and if the concept of a plan is the ACA, you have to say that right. out loud. Yeah. Tall Tyler is like, don't worry, sir. I got Leah Michelle from Glee to help you with this thing. So <laughs> do it together. <laughs> so... Another ridiculous moment from Vance happened during a segment about energy policy and climate change. His answer on climate change started with, OK, let's pretend for the sake of argument that climate change is real. And um, yeah, doesn't matter what comes next. No, sure you cannot be in charge of anything now, especially if you said the phrase weird science <laughs> to describe the entire field 
which he did. Okay, weird is our word, couch fucker. Get your own. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I like this. I think if they're going to do it, we should too, right? Just like he finishes his little abortion speech or family value speech, and we're like, okay, so let's pretend the God who watches baby rape is real. <laughs> oh, yeah. right? and you your answer. I don't think America will now like it, worse. but I'd like yeah. it. So the biggest moment of the debate happened near the end when J.D. Vance had to tie his brain into insane knots in order to deal with a question about threats to American democracy. The moderators pointed out how the vice president has won a especially important role. It's a role that never used to matter because a president not doing treason was a pretty safe assumption, but those days are over. That role, of course, for the VP is certifying the results of an election. And Vance is on record saying that Mike Pence was wrong to certify Biden's win in January of 2021. Vance claimed that he would not have certified that election. So the moderators asked him if he'd certify a future election, assuming that every governor of every state submitted the officially verified results, just like they did after the 2020 election. So naturally, Vance had to do a completely bullshit, evasive answer. And that's when we got the best moment of the night from Tim Walls. He just asked Vance directly, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election, yes or no? And Vance responded, approximate quote, why are you bringing up old shit? <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was followed by the classic debate tactic called you are. Here's the exact words from J.D. Vance. When asked, did Donald Trump lose in 2020? He said, quote, I'm focused on the future. Huh. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? And exact quote. That was his answer. And then Tim Walls jumped back in to say, that is a damning non-answer. Isn't it? And also, it sure he goes, I'm focused on the future, like 2020. What? But also, so okay. <laughs> right. Now, I want to, I want to like back away from this so we can see what actually happened. They asked, "Hey, are you going to do a treason?" His answer was pass. pass. <laughs> and the polls are statistically fucking tied. Well, Insane. you know that's because hardcore Biden voters like myself still aren't convinced our guy is out of the race. We're going to send a message, damn it! <laughs> okay. I'm writing him in. <laughs> so yeah. J.D. Vance got the simplest question ever, and he couldn't answer because his boss is Donald Trump and J.D. Vance is a coward. As VP, other than breaking a tie in the Senate, you have pretty much just the one job unless something insane happens, and Vance would not be able to handle it. Great job by Tim Walls for making that extra clear. And speaking of big lies, I just want to mention one other moment because I laughed out loud. Oh, my God. Loud. So... Following a remark from Vance complaining about illegal immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, one of the moderators explained that Springfield has a large community of legal immigrants. And then J.D. Vance said, we called no fact checking my lies. We called no doing that. Mm -hmm. He actually said almost exact quote. He said out loud. This is the exact quote. The rules were that you weren't going to fact check. <laughs> that yeah. was his response. Well, yeah. Hey, I, I know a great way to avoid embarrassing fact checks. If you ever need one, couch fucker, just give me a call. I'll yeah. help you out. <laughs> I don't, but you can call me too, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> need someone to tell you. So, bottom line, debates in their current form are fucking stupid. Until we get a graphic with like a running scoreboard of truth versus lying or other relevant things, it's just a weird competition about who has better, smooth, snappy sound bites, and that's nothing. Hopefully the one big moment of J.D. Vance using a non-answer to side with treason is gonna have an effect on the margins in swing states. I mean, well, or everyone with any semblance of progressive morality could uh, get off their ass and vote for Kamala Harris, in which case the undecided centrist voters wouldn't even matter. But <laughs> I don't know, there's a couple of options there for you. Crazy, yeah. crazy it's talk. Tough. All right, on that note, we're gonna take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. Okay, what about Pesto the Penguin? Uh, no. Okay, well, I'm putting that in the Dropbox. Hey guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, no, I'm just making sure Heath is okay when I'm gone. Okay. Uh, how, how are you doing that? 
uh, cute animals Dropbox. I put like one or two in my Dropbox a week so that, you know, when I'm gone, Eve can still have bulldogs and stuff in the inbox. Exactly. I mean, that sounds great, Eli, but have you thought about taking care of your loved ones when you're gone, like financially? Oh, you're talking about NFTs of bulldogs. I most definitely am not. I'm talking about life insurance. You see, 41% of people don't have the life insurance coverage they need, but Policy Genius makes finding and buying life insurance a breeze. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options are 100% online and let you avoid unnecessary medical exams. Wow, that sounds great. It is. With Policy Genius, you can compare quotes from America's top insurers side by side for free with no hidden fees. Plus, their licensed support team helps you get what you need fast so you can get on with your life. They answer questions, handle paperwork, and advocate for you throughout the process. Save time and money on providing a financial safety net for your family. Head to policygenius.com or click the link on the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. All right, Noah. Hey, uh, Heath, since uh, you don't need these, you want to sneak a peek of pesto right now? I do, yes, yes. Oh, he's so big! Right? So big, but he baby! He is baby. But big. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in aiding and abetting news, you know... It's not very often that we here at The Skeptocrat get to report on good news without a caveat. Donald Trump fell down the stairs, but somehow it put him 12 points up in the polls. J.D. Vance shat himself making small talk in a donut shop, but a platoon of firefighters in Georgia did the same thing in solidarity. It feels like there's always a catch. Well... I think I might have a relatively catch-free piece of good news this week, as the company that makes the cure for AIDS has announced they will allow a generic version in poor countries. Well, I guess the caveat is the fact that somebody had to let someone manufacture the cure for AIDS, but okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Right, but the CIA, they gotta be mad after getting foiled, they spent all that time and effort creating a disease, so that's... (laughs) That's fun. Right? Nice little conflict. Yeah. Also, uh, a bunch of firefighters in Georgia who are Republicans shitting themselves in solidarity feels like a positive. That's not a caveat. Did you guys that's see no, that? I just, the thing where they just tried to like do that. the felon. Ah, it's so funny. Anyways, now you might be thinking to yourself, Eli, I didn't know there was a cure for AIDS. Are you sure there's a cure for AIDS? And no, there's not. There's a really, really effective twice yearly treatment to prevent AIDS called lenacapavir. How effective, you ask? Well, in the summary of one major study of over 2,000 women in Africa, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is rated much higher on the media bias chart than I am, said, quote, That's good. Twice yearly lenacapavir reduced HIV incidents by 100% as compared with background HIV incidents and by 100% as compared with daily oral FTAF. No adolescent girls or young women who received lenacapavir acquired HIV infection, end quote. Or in plain language, back to me now, we fucking cured AIDS, bitches! Cured it! Get fucked! Get fucked, AIDS! So, well... Curing and preventing are different things, and I feel like people who currently have AIDS would would say that's an important distinction, but this is still pretty fucking cool. So Negative Nancy. No illusions. That's what you are. You're negative yeah. Nancy. Oh, yeah. But as I said, the story actually gets better. Uh, the pharmaceutical company that makes Lenacapavir is the unfortunately named Gilead. Gilead. You gotta change that, <laughs> y'all. You could pick any. They had you it want. first. GP. That, Gilead it's Pharmaceuticals. First, You're GP now. There you it, go. Be the first question at every stockholder meeting, right? They just get. We're still going with that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Gilead announced a plan to allow six generic pharmaceutical companies in Asia and North Africa to make and sell the drug at a much lower price. How much lower? Well, while Gilead currently charges forty-two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars a year for the on-brand version, a study in Liverpool showed that it could be made for as little as forty dollars a patient. So we can expect these treatments to be a lot more more affordable and therefore accessible in the areas of the world that need it the most. Yeah. And and before anybody says that Gilead is evil for charging such high prices for a potentially life-saving drug, I I want to defend them by pointing out that like that's how we pay for medical research in this country. So it's it's not that Gilead is evil necessarily. It's that our entire system is evil. Yeah. This might be the one context in which make America great again could be a good thing. Jonas Salk chose to not make billions on a patent and instead 
donate the vaccine for the benefit of humankind. Yeah. You're always allowed to do that if you want. Unless, of course, you get sued by shareholders. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe the system needs a little tweaking. A little fix here, a little fix there. Maybe. Now, I did promise you a story without a catch. And there isn't really a catch. But... This announcement only applies to low-income countries. And as the New York Times points out in the article linked in the show notes, middle-income countries, which still make up 20% of AIDS cases, will not be granted the same permissions. But overall, this is incredible news because we cured AIDS and now we're making it cheaper to spread the word. Cured AIDS. Uh, this, is why, this is why we're rated so low on the media bias chart. Do a one-man job. <laughs> Damn it. And in Helena handbasket news tonight. Excellent. As we record this episode, huge swaths, thank you, of this country are still digging their way out of the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, the deadliest storm to strike the United States since Katrina laid waste to the Gulf Coast in 2005. And when tragedies of this magnitude strike, it leaves a lot of affected people asking why, and it leaves a lot of terrible conspiracy grifting fucking idiot demons answering why? Yeah, they're not allowed to do answers nope. at all. I think. <laughs> sure, okay. and Honestly. you know what? They're not allowed to just ask questions either. At this point, they've lost Talking. that How privilege. How about talk- communicating? Just you just don't that. do Quiet yep. time. Yep. and die. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I want to respond to a few of those conspiracy theories specifically. But first, I want to just respond to all of them generally by saying, "Hey, fuck you, Jesus." Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a national tragedy to remind you that bullshit isn't harmless and doesn't have a pause button. Nope. Huh? Yeah, also, I'm just going to start the clock for Deep State Tornado Gun. Uh, I'm guessing about one minute. It's got a minute. Yeah, depends, depends on how it decides to spin the thread here. That is exactly all of it. Depends on, yeah. So let's start with the most visible lunatic conspiracy theorist dumbass in the country. Uh, that would be the one that Republicans nominated to the presidency again. Because while the storm was still ongoing, Donald Trump was already out in front of cameras spreading lies that affected areas weren't getting federal relief. So much so that the fucking governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, had to come onto the airwaves to count counter Trump's bullshit narrative. Trump also amplified baseless claims that over a billion dollars in FEMA funds were missing because they were spent on illegal immigrants. I just in, in general, I guess, probably a fucking Manny petties for him or something like that. Yeah, which is ridiculous because everyone knows that illegal immigrants are the ones giving the Manny petties. So why would that even Obviously. Would, okay, Regardless of who's giving the Manny petties, they are delightful. I had one for the first time. It was the fucking best. It's a weird take from Donald Trump. Is thank you. Yes. Who doesn't like a Manny Petty? Solidarity. Now, uh, but of course, there's never been a piece of dangerously batshit right wing propaganda that Marjorie Taylor Greene couldn't one up. So when she saw Trump's claim of sort of FEMA mismanagement, she raised them weather control. There it is. There it is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Pretty quick. About a minute. Yeah. Now that's right. In the midst of the emergency response, Greene tweeted out, "Quote." Yes, they can control the weather. It's ridiculous for anyone to lie and say it can't be done. End quote. Uh, no official word on who they are, but uh, we already know which minority <laughs> has the space lasers. So I think we could all take a pretty good guess. <laughs> They're from New York, everybody. Maybe you've heard of them. Yeah. So why are the Jews at FEMA hitting the U.S. with hurricanes? Well, to answer that, well, there's, there are actually two answers. To, but to understand those answers, you simply need to look at where Helene hit. Because where did it hit? That's right, red states like Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Except for Georgia is a swing state, yeah. and North Carolina is actually trending purple. But right. but it hit the reddest parts of those states, and, and also the bluest <laughs> parts. It yeah. also hit the bluest parts. But it was, and and as tragically high as the death toll is, it's certainly not something that's going to swing any fucking elections. So no goddamn clue. But the idea that FEMA sent a hurricane to wipe out Trump voters has not only gained traction online, it was also what Madge Taj Gadge was talking about in her fucking tweet. Okay, hot take. Um, yeah, no, I get it. Using a space laser to create a hurricane is bad. The Jewish people, but <laughs> but if you manage to hit MTG's house in Georgia next time, I, I feel like lots of people in the area would take one for the team. Absolutely, right? you yeah. can, you can hit Noah's house with two trees, it's, it's two trees, four. It hit it with four. There are four well, trees that hit my house. Eight. So now, of course. <laughs> The mark of any good conspiracy theory is that no two conspiracy theorists can agree on any single fact other than the official story is bullshit, right? And that's where the godfather of conspiracy theorists come in, because according to Alex Jones, the real reason that FEMA directed a hurricane at North Carolina 
the long way was because they wanted to chase <laughs> private landowners away from the ample lithium reserves in the area. What? And they couldn't think of any more direct way of doing that than wiping entire towns off the map with a hurricane. It was big lithium. Yep. Got it. Well, plus, you know, gay frogs are having a field day. This whole <laughs> right, yeah. Just houses floating past, gay frogs fucking everywhere. It's a, it's a scene. And uh, now big lithium, they just, they wait for mm -hmm. something with batteries. Yeah, they wait well, for the lithium yeah. to charge. Yeah. yeah. No lithium, no cell phones to catch them in the act. It's the perfect crime, <laughs> it's, people, right? All right, yeah. Perfect crime. Now, I, I should be clear that I'm just scratching the surface of the conspiracy theories that cropped up even in the first few days following landfall. And of course, fucking Elon Musk is amplifying them all with his stupid fucking website. Uh, another popular theme is that FEMA is confiscating supplies and keeping rescue workers out of the affected areas so that people can suffer more. And the evidence cited for this one, by the way, is generally that FEMA isn't just letting any goddamn body who wants to fly a drone or a helicopter into the emergency zones. Uh, I've also seen a lot of people claiming FEMA was unprepared for the storm because they've been so focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Yeah, no, I actually, I heard about that. They were doing one of their DEI things, and they were like, okay, so that's why we're not saying slur words at work. Fuck, hurricane! Okay. Yep. Ha! We should have been punching clouds out of the sky already. <laughs> we're way behind now. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, you know, look, obviously, I don't need to tell anybody listening to this show that these conspiracy theories have real-world consequences, life and death so consequences. Sure. No, look, be, people are trying to escape these areas because they're being told that no help is coming, and they're dying because of that. Right. And one of the main reasons FEMA was unprepared for this storm is because they've been underfunded for years. And one of the major reasons they're so critically underfunded is because they're constantly the scapegoat of all these fucking conspiracy theorists. Uh, and, and all of these facts, let's face it, are going to get much worse as climate change makes disasters like this both worse and more frequent, which is yet another problem conspiracy theorists are exacerbating in case the work didn't seem daunting enough. Hey, whatever happened with Jade Helm 15 and the, the Walmart prison camps? Was that real or you're all stupid? I forget. I <laughs> guess it was we, one of those things. Yeah. Oh, and I seriously texted my friend who told me about Jade Helm 15. I was like, hey, that never happened. What's what what's happened? going on with have that? You, have you, you found reconsidered out about it? the way in which that you like you take Did information you put up a pump and pump at them and that's that, why they didn't do it? Yeah, that might be it. And speaking of the fact that half of our electorate has lost their collective fucking minds, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our other sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay, what about this one? Hey, buddy. Dude, how's please stop. Come on. Hey, guys. What you doing? I am trying to find the personality Heath wants me to put on, but he's being super cagey just, about it. Just be a person. Oh, yeah, Heath. I'll just be a person. Eli, it looks like you're having a hard time being yourself with the people you care about. Have you considered therapy? Psh, I'd love to therapy, Noah, but there's nobody around for a billion miles. Well, then you should try BetterHelp. What's better help? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I don't know, guys. Therapy can be pretty expensive. It can. That's why BetterHelp offers financial aid, plus you can use HSA and FSA dollars. Amazing! It is amazing. Take off the mask with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Skeptocrat. All right, guys, thanks. So, uh, what do you say? You ready to take off the mask? What if the mask is Mudang? Okay. Okay, you can keep the mask if it's Mudang. Right? Oh, so cute. It biting. Biting everybody. She bite. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in childless dog gentleman news, <laughs> Derek Anderson <laughs> is a candidate for U.S. Congress, hoping to win the open seat in Virginia's 7th District. And according to his website, he's engaged to be married, but he doesn't have any kids of his own, and he lives alone with his dog at the moment. All that is perfectly reasonable. Delightful, even, because of the dog. Okay, Love it. How's dog. the angle of his smoke alarm? Shut up. Know? Don't. Why would you bring that? That's so mean. <laughs> I'm going to need a second. You're looking at it right now, aren't you? Shut up! <laughs> okay, but there's one problem for Mr. Anderson. 
He's also a Republican. And if you're not a cishet Christian breeder with a spouse who's very unsatisfied sexually, that means you're not really a Republican right. and you can't be trusted. Well, in order to deal with that issue in the hotly contested race that he's in, his campaign posted footage of Anderson posing in family photos with a fake family. Yep. In order to make campaign material that made it seem like he's a family man, he borrowed a family. And then he obviously got caught. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, I'm I'm sorry, because I'm looking at this picture right now. But if you were going to pose with a fake family, why wouldn't you get a better looking family than this? I mean, if, it's, <laughs> yeah. if this is just your family, this is what you got. But like you're getting a fake one. You might as well just upgrade. If you're renting a family, put yeah. some money get, into get it. Get some hotties. Yeah. Also... In what universe would you not get caught doing this? Right. The, the, right, the movie, understand. The Invention of Lying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so big thanks to Skeptical Monkey for sending the link. Skeptical Monkey has the option to request a never-ending string of pebble messages from Eli with delightful baby hippos and very thick pugs. Well, to be fair, everybody has the option to request that. They should be so lucky, no illusions. They <laughs> should be so lucky. It. Okay. But Eli has to do it for Skeptical Monkey. Oh, okay. God damn it. Given the request. So Anderson got called out for the insane liar footage last week by the New York Times in their article headlined, GOP candidates looking to soften their image turn to their wives. And the article explained how the general idea of the GOP strategy is based on taking away bodily autonomy from like half the population and then posing next to the people whose human rights they stole to help their image with women. It's confusing. Now, granted, some of those wives wanted their human rights taken away, but that doesn't make it better. And plenty of others hate their fucking husbands and are going to be secretly voting for Democrats. And of course, my favorite ones are going to dance out the door on Election Day, singing a song about how they're about to vote for Kamala Harris and flipping double birds, and then probably divorce their shitty husbands after the kids get older, and then probably report back on all their amazing orgasms that they're now having. There you go. They found another use for those double birds, Henry. Huh? Huh, look. <laughs> I'm in your Christian movie. You have to be in Christian movies. <laughs> Don't wait for the kids to get older. Yes, just go. Just go. So... Regardless of the myriad reasons the grand old party is polling badly with women, the Republican men running for office have been posting lots of photos with wives and kids to prove their family values cred and their woman-friendly cred, I guess. And apparently Derek Anderson heard about that, and then he panicked, and he called up a friend, and he was like, hey, bud, uh, I need to borrow your wife and kids. I have to uh -huh. do a thing. <laughs> and after clarifying a bit further, and then... I'm assuming getting roasted for a while about how sad this was. <laughs> that friend <laughs> agreed to loan out the family because their property to be loaned. Well, and, and the saddest part is that it's optimistic to assume he wanted the picture to improve his standing with women. Right. Like the, the more likely scenario is that he was trying to prove to his potential constituency that he wasn't a gay. <laughs> oh, that's very likely what was the reason for it. Yeah. So. They did a big photo and video shoot with the fake family and posted the material on a website run by the National Republican Campaign Committee. And that means, technically, Anderson didn't use it for campaign ads. What? That's actually the argument we got in response. What? They didn't use the fake family for campaign ads. They just had a national campaign committee Posted on a website used by super PACs to get material for their <laughs> campaign <laughs> ads. Official. So Jesus. fake family doesn't count. It doesn't count. Imagine the person who found that convincing, who was like upset about this. was like, oh, all right. No, it was just on the super PACs oh, website. Never okay. mind. Cool. We all know that that argument comes from a man with his head in his hands in a room that's been silent for 10 <laughs> straight minutes. <laughs> Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on, I got and an his idea. Tear puffed <laughs> eyes rise out of his hands and he mumbles. He wipes a bunch of snot and then he mumbles that argument. Yep, that is how that happened. That is canon. And here's the rest of the argument from the Anderson campaign after getting caught in the very obvious and yes, such a checkable lie. I don't understand how they even thought this could possibly work. So 
according to the official statement from a spokesman, Anderson was clearly just doing a normal photo shoot with female supporters and their kids, saying, quote, Derek's opponent and every other candidate in America are in similar pictures and video with supporters of all kinds. And then in a follow-up statement, the spokesman added, quote, the false politically motivated reporting on Derek appearing in a normal campaign video with female supporters and their kids is both hilarious and sad. <laughs> and well, exact quote. I, I mean, it is hilarious and sad, though. I mean, he's got us there. As so, you, you, you picked up steam at the end there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, they're lying. Yep. That's what's happening now. Um, <laughs> there's no chance this was not intended to seem like his actual family. Of course no not. Chance at all. Look at the yeah. picture. Yeah. It's yeah, so look at the picture. picture. <laughs> look at the picture. In one photo, Anderson is standing in a very clear family photo pose, like a holiday card. Yep. With a woman and three little girls in front of a house that's clearly meant to look like it's their house where they live as a family. And not their dad. Right. <laughs> their dad's not He's taking the picture, man. He's behind the camera. He's 100% so taking the picture. It's so fucking weird. Yep. It's so creepy. And just in case that wasn't clear enough, one of the videos on that website has Anderson and the same fake family sitting around a dining room <laughs> table together <laughs> laughing at jokes Like you do. He's not afraid to sit down with his constituents and have them call him daddy for the camera a couple of times. <laughs> is, is that so wrong? Yes, it is. <laughs> so all that's insane. But here's actually the craziest part for me. Apparently, it's a real photo of Anderson with, you know, a fake family, but a real photo. But somehow it looks like Derek Anderson is photoshopped in, right? Like I'm oh, looking it at it. Oh, does. Yeah. Like, yeah. Somehow he's got permanent photoshopped into a family picture energy at all times. <laughs> That's like his vibe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Visually. And in eat your heart out news. One of the plus sides to Trump being the Republican candidate for president is that they've kind of put all their chips on crazy, right? If they're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs is at the top of the ticket. It only gets shakier on the way down, which is why Hung Kao, the Republican candidate for Virginia's U.S. Senate seat, spent part of his debate against the Democratic incumbent Tim Kaine explaining that the problems with the drag queens in charge of the army is that they're not willing enough to self-eviscerate and eat their own offal. What? Eli, I, I want to guess and you. I really do because it's my job, but I don't know how. Sure. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Seriously, I was reading this and I was like, I got to check Eli on this. He got this from somewhere insane. It's the onion or something. No, it's real. That was a real thing mm-hmm. that a Republican said. If that debate was an improv troupe doing a sketch, it would have ended with like Tim Kaine jumping into a meta sketch, being like, and scene. Okay, class, <laughs> improv class within an improv. What did we learn about building a sketch way too fast? Right. Yeah, it's not an offering. Yeah. You would have had to get out of that. Yeah. So when asked about low military recruitment numbers, this is what Cal had to say. Quote, when you're using a drag queen to recruit for the Navy, that's not the people we want. What we need is alpha males and alpha females who are going to rip out their own guts, eat them, and ask for seconds. Those are young men and women that's what? going to win wars. End exact quote. <laughs> I, I call me crazy, but I feel like the gaping wounds in their abdomens and insufficient nutritional intake would be a disadvantage in war, wouldn't it? I that feels like a minus. I don't know about wars, but it feels like a minus. That being said... Do you remember on D-Day, I feel like I read something about this, allied soldiers, they would, they'd eat their own belly and they freaked out all the Nazis on the beach. <laughs> I, think yeah. it's, I think that's what he's talking about. I do remember it's that. It's a power yeah. move. It is a power move. I, I guarantee you that. Now, hearing that, you, like my co-hosts, might be thinking to yourself, hey, fucking what? Well, let me explain. He's yeah, I said fucking what twice, I think, already. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Involuntarily. <laughs> Yeah, so he's referencing uh, Yeoman Second Class Joshua Kelly, a non-binary Navy service member who goes by the name Harpy Daniels when they perform in drag. The Navy recently selected Kelly as one of several active duty digital ambassadors in a pilot program using social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok for recruitment. And so, the right promptly freaked out and the drag queens is running the military now. Freak out is fully in force. 
which is rough for them because like I hear the only way to prove that you're all the way not a drag queen is to rip out your own intestines and eat them, <laughs> right? Also, if the military wants more people, they should be having drag queens help. Like the sad board guy at the strip mall next to the Dollar General is not a closer. I've seen no. plenty of that guy. <laughs> Bianca Del Rio, closer. Exactly. <laughs> I want to hear what she has to say. And look, I want to be clear. Obviously, we here at the Skeptocrat think it is revolting that someone with such an honorable job in service of our nation would stoop to being a military recruiter. I mean, those people <laughs> prey on children. They do, you know? though. Yeah. But I think Cow is missing one very important part of his psychopathic metaphor, which is that his trans service members, which is what he means when he says drag queens, are totally the most willing to do major bodily restructure in support of their beliefs. I mean, yeah. someone needs to Google top surgery and send the results to Cow because anyone who goes through that, 10 times more ready to fight in a war than I am. That's all no I'm saying. No okay? shit, yeah. Ready for battle. Good point. And finally tonight, Oklahoma school superintendent Ryan Walters continues his campaign to be America's worst person after Trump dies this week when he somehow managed to make his effort to waste millions of dollars in taxpayer money buying Bibles to violate students' First Amendment rights with worse. Because okay, I like that it had the phrase Trump dies this week. I know like the way it was put <laughs> no, together. Yeah, it didn't yeah, mean no, he's true. gonna necessarily, but yeah. Now well, we've said it a couple times. You never know. So when I hit control V, that's what comes out. He, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's happy whenever I get sad. So yeah. So, but now this, this did get worse because a couple of days ago, he released the required specifications of the 55,000 Bibles that he intends to procure with state funds. And it turns out that the only Bible published anywhere in the world that meets those specifications is the Donald Trump endorsed God bless the USA Bible. Okay, one more rule. The school store can only sell securities for social media companies that lost $4 billion of their value this year for their principal shareholder. <laughs> That's one, one other rule about the school budget. Oh, what do you mean if you don't count buybacks, we can still do Twitter? Shit, yeah, fuck right. all. Oh, oh, they're all buying Twitter. <laughs> Now, so we just covered this asshole on last week's scathing, but the quick version is that once the Supreme Court squashed his efforts to publicly fund a Catholic school, he switched tactics in his effort to fuck the First Amendment to death. The new plan would require every public school classroom in the state to teach from the Bible, whatever the fuck that means. Like stand on it? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. He doesn't. They don't specify. Um, now, he's gone back and forth on whether every class would have to teach from the Bible or just every history and literature class, depending on how legal he's trying to make it sound at the moment. But he has been clear on how many Bibles he wants. That would be 55,000, which it's worth noting is about 12,000 more Bibles than Oklahoma has public school classrooms. And I'm sure some of those classrooms don't teach history or literature. So <laughs> right. like, he's clearly buying a Bible for shop class, too. Uh, you got to learn about cubits. If, sure. If the kids are going to make an arc for the ocean flood in Oklahoma. Sure. Yeah. So this was the story uh, as it stood when Heath, Eli, and Marsh covered it on Thursday over on Scathing, but it got so much worse the following day when he unveiled the required Bible specs. So according to the official bid document, the Bibles that he's going to buy, they have to be the King James Version, uh, which is generally believed to be the least accurate of the popular translations, but fine, whatever. Uh, they can't have any, quote, study guides, publisher narration, or additional commentary, end quote, because God forbid students actually learn the stuff Bible scholars know about that fucking book. <laughs> um, the Bibles also have to be leather bound or at least bound in a leather like material. That's the phrase that they use. Uh, yeah, this is ostensibly for durability, though. I challenge you to name any other fucking school book that's bound in leather or leather like material, despite them all having a, s approximately the same durability requirements. Yeah, well. Bound in leather-like material, that was actually the slogan for Trump steaks, too. And, <laughs> well, so, okay. using it On again. the upside, it does look like the state of Oklahoma might be interested in iloveskinbooks.com. So, you know, call me, okie dokies. We yeah, right. Happen. Right. Uh, but, but here's where the grift kicks into high gear. The Bibles also have to contain the Pledge of Allegiance printed within the Bible, even in a commentaryless leather-bound KJV. Uh, it also has to include a copy of the Declaration of Independence and a copy of the U.S. Constitution, and a copy of the Bill of Rights, which leaves, of all the thousands of Bibles available for purchase anywhere in the U.S., just the one. 
Just one known Bible already in print matches the specifications that Walter laid out, and it just so happens to be the only Bible where Donald goddamn Trump earns a commission on each sale. History books can be uh, approved by any country singer. That's one other rule. But anyone you want, if it rhymes with uh, Flea Schmeenwood. Yeah, no, I was surprised <laughs> that they didn't go ahead and say, also, it has to have the lyrics of God Bless the USA. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I should also point out that Walters has already thrown out a price for this purchase. He's asked the state legislature for $3 million to cover his Bible purchases, though he's assured everyone that he already has the $3 million in the budget if they refuse. And that number is another tell. Because look, I did a quick Google search on it. It looks like I can get a commentary list KJV study Bible for about nine fucking dollars if I'm buying them in bulk. Right, and that's buying by the dozen, not by the thousand. Even at that price, 55,000 of them is under half a million dollars. And it's fucking free shipping on orders of $200 or more. But the Trump Bible retails for $60 a pop. And I'll save you the math. $3 million divided by 55000 is $54.54. So assuming a 10% bulk discount, that's about spot the fuck on. Okay, okay, but the best part is he's very clearly only acting for a 10% discount on 55,000 books. Yes! What, do you have a Barnes and Noble membership? <laughs> I got a punch card. How many do I get? 10%. If I buy nine of them, Amazing. the 10th one's free though, right? I think that's how it works. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like James, Liz, Kellen Danley, Mitchell Johnson, Steve Juhaz. Hello, everyone. Please subscribe to my Only Flans account. Corinna. Carl Baker, Thomas Kirwan, and Benjamin Page. You are the waking up to the face push of a golden retriever of people, and we love you. I got to do that today with a golden retriever who woke me up. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed. Available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. We said you wouldn't fact check me. He, I didn't watch the debate. When you wrote that in your story, I thought you were like being hyperbolic. No, no. I laughed for five I solid I laughed so minutes. hard when I watched this. I dude. laughed, calmed myself down, sat back down, <laughs> thought about what he had just said, and laughed again. The rules say I'm allowed to lie. I'm Fuck. doing that 100% Fuck. of the time for the rest of our lives. Yeah. We agreed that you wouldn't fact check me. <laughs> That was the rules that they set up, I'm sure. Yeah. You don't say it, though. Why if it would ha- you You have say to just it? deal with it when it happens. You would write it in blood at midnight and then kill everyone present. <laughs> Amazing. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.